Hello, this is Reverb Audio again, and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, resonances, cabinet resonances uh, for loudspeakers. And as you see, I'm using again that Holy Grail background. And when you see this Holy Grail background cropping up, then it means that I'm bringing up an issue of vital importance. That uh, although these a lot of those things that I'm showing with this background is something that is totally neglected uh, by um, by the mainstream. There's not much focus on it, but I have found that these are there are some really critical elements that uh, will give you that push between mediocrity and and the stuff of your dreams and and, and these are those things that i have found during my uh, two decades journey as a loudspeaker builder and not just mine but also it also includes the observation that my friends have made that i have made but through their experiences so and also mainly what i learned from my mentor from Stu who basically has, who was a treasure trove of uh, basically mankind's experience. He summarized the experience of humanity, what we did in the past hundred years with loudspeaker cabinets. He was a truly exceptional man. And, uh, and, and if you guys think I know a lot about loudspeakers, it's because I learned from the best. So when you are standing on the shoulder of giants, then uh, you can see further compared to uh, looking around in the middle of the marketplace you know and then the next thing you see is the shoulder of your friend who also is looking for stuff and you cannot see further than the next stand which is in front of you so coming back to loudspeaker cabinets uh, i have a after studying everything that there is, that there was, that has been made in the past hundred years, uh, and also being uh, a music lover of uh, acoustic music, basically music instruments that uh, give out sound by themselves, so the, we are not hearing their sound in a, in a pub or a venue through an amplified system, because in that case you are really looking uh, or, or listening to the changes that are brought into the performance by the amplification at the show and then it, it's turning into a show and that's what today's high-end industry is focusing to give you a good big show and I say they are doing a jolly good job at that uh, it, it's truly fantastic but it comes at a crazy, truly fantastic price as well. Of course, uh, those uh, crazy expensive stuff, they eventually start trickling down. But, uh, but the crowd of the manufacturers is going after the, the show sound. Everyone is like a, a wannabe Wilson Audio copier or something like that. So, uh, so basically, uh, most manufacturers go in that direction, and and even those who don't want to go there, their main influences are these guys, and 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 if not, then basically, even if they uh, can build something truly outstanding, they usually condemn themselves in to mediocrity and low sales because they are not going to get never going to get in the limelight they won't be able to uh, afford to do uh, marketing big marketing schemes for themselves and that's why i recommend if you are looking for uh, loudspeakers and you don't think about building your own then look for small manufacturers look around who are making speakers in your neighborhood and and try to uh, audition them, try to get in touch with the manufacturer and, and visit them and, and hear how their speakers sound in the factory or maybe at, at his place, uh, I mean the manu manufacturer's place so where he has a setup and, uh, and that's how you will experience new experiences, new things 
And uh, anyway, I'm just circling back to my experiences here and, and my so which are basically I came to the conclusion that if you want to create a loudspeaker that is good with acoustic instrument at, at reproducing unprocessed natural music then you have to basically quit the path of creating uh, a quote-unquote modern loudspeaker you you just I, I totally turn my back on that and I don't look back uh, on that choice on that decision and basically what I'm doing I'm building music instruments and um, and when you are a music instrument builder or luthier so when you build guitars when you build pianos when when you make uh, flutes you build organs uh, then you you have a totally different mindset from uh, from working from from what the loudspeaker industry has by and large today and and that's because when you have uh, when you are building instruments music instruments uh, then you want to maximize efficiency you want to be able to have a, an output from the instrument and 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 when a music instrument is perfected a better music instrument is never the one that loses a lot of efficiency so that's what we see in loudspeaker development today efficiency is plummeting it's going down 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 uh, in a, for for when you look at a violin if if you if you take like like the best examples of, of violins which are like master violins uh, uh, and you compare it to a study violin uh, that that you use as as a, in the beginning when you are learning to play violin the master violin will be just playing so much louder that you will be in shock when you hear the two side by side so so that's one thing and the other thing is what you notice is that a, a cheapo violin will sound over dampened it will have these uh, unwanted resonances in it and that's what you experience with the majority of loudspeakers as well and then what loudspeaker companies try to do is to dampen them more to lower that nastiness in the sound and yes they can do that that's what's happening the nastiness is getting lower but uh, that's also taking away the the musicality of the instrument because it's affecting not just the nastiness but the overall uh, representation of the sound and the nastiness is still there yeah maybe 10 db quieter than it was before maybe the frequencies shifted a bit but it's still there the plastic flavor it just doesn't go away uh, once it's introduced and, and and when you are approach it the problem as a music instrument then you fix those materials you abandon that material that causes that nasty plasticky resonance and and you just embrace the fact that you have to work with resonances because creating sound is creating resonance and there is our driver the loudspeaker driver that is itself the motor that's the engine that creates the resonances but its surface area is negligible to make it useful for even for uh, mid-range or upper bass frequencies the best uh, loudspeaker driver can do even a 15 inch driver is just mid-range it can't even uh, like i like can even a 21 inch driver is is very poor at producing even upper bass frequencies it needs reinforcement from a cabinet and when you use the cabinet not as a, as a means to cancel the breath pressure to fight things but but you use it uh, employ its strength to use it as a resonating surface that's when you can uh, step up to the next level however where all 
I would say not all, but most people who, stri who try to do that way, they are failing because they don't realize that, uh, that resonances are only good when they are controlled. So when the loudspeaker industry is talking about uh, getting rid of unwanted resonances, they are absolutely right about that. We do not want unwanted resonances which means like resonance modes that are not uh, in correlation with what the driver is sending to you, those signals, so they are not the harmonics of those signals, they are not the extension of those frequency waves that the driver is generating, uh, but uh, they, uh, they linger on uncontrolledly, uh, there are modes that are elicited that we don't want, so that's the art of it, of how to create a surface that is able to resonate and supplement that uh, minuscule driver's uh, surface with, with, a, with a bigger surface that is capable of supporting those uh, lower frequencies. Let's look at... Uh, where is it? Uh, here. No, it won't be... Oh yes, it's here. So let's look at a cello. So when you have a cello or, or a double bass, they, uh, the body of the instrument is the resonator surface. It, that's, that's the thing that, that creates those sound frequencies. And, and if you want to reproduce a cello faithfully, then you need a loudspeaker which is approximately the size of a cello. And, and if you follow the modern way to have a, a loudspeaker cabinet without uh, uh, any sort of resonating properties, then basically you will hear, uh, when you hear a recording of a cello, you will hear the strings only, and you will not hear the contribution of the body. Because uh, the strings themselves directly red radiate the high frequencies, the, the kilohertz plus frequencies, and it's the body that supports like down to a hundred hertz or below and uh, and your loudspeaker has to be the same way so the body is the is is the device that that supports the sound waves uh, below a kilohertz and 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 today basically the vast majority of loudspeaker design is to make the cabinet inert and use a bass reflex or, or some kind of other technology to create the uh, lower mid-range through bass frequencies which will be, uh, I would say, well, I will not comment on that but, but you, you will notice that, that the, we get this artificially tight uh, bass response and, and, and now that's uh, hailed as something very uh, positive uh, but when you train your hearing, you listen to live instruments, then you will notice that it's something very dry. And it, it's kind of like, uh, like eating dried fish versus uh, like a cooked fish. And, and then you have to chew it and there's no taste in it. And the same thing happens when, when, you, when you try to deaden all the uh, cabinet resonances, then, uh, then you will miss a out a lot from the sound and and when I'm talking about controlled cabinet resonances this is not uh, something artificial input or output that's added to the loudspeakers but controlled output and and for example that's what a piano does so and and if you want to achieve it for yourself like for example even when you are building, let's say, an open baffle loudspeaker, then uh, the easiest way, or I would say uh, one nice way to achieve it, is to make a frame of hardwood, and then as a baffle, attach uh, a reasonably uh, thin surface. So I would uh, recommend to use a half inch thick high quality plywood for the baffle and go for uh, let's say a, a walnut or an oak or ebony or other hardwood or maybe even you can use cherry wood 
uh, mahogany, uh, redwood, anything for the frame. And, and basically, let's just try to draw it. So here's our open buffer. So let's say that will be the buffer. And here's your driver in the center. And, and the buffer material is half inch thick or thin plywood. So it, it's allowed to resonate. But if you just have that half inch thick plywood, it can in all three dimensions resonate, distort and those waves propagate even when the driver stop turning uh, the buffer to transmit those resonances those waves are still there because there is no controlled propagation so what you want is to add a frame and then put your buffer on a hard frame that has different uh, frequency propagating properties than the material it's made of so you can even make it out of steel if you want to or I would rather say some other material, any material that's non-magnetic and, uh, and, and just have a very, very rigid frame so there is a support for this resonating membrane so it makes it like, like a piano frame or if you are thinking about a drum it's like then, then the baffle becomes like your drum skin which is supported on the frame of the drum so that's how a drum works too. You, we have a hard frame with a soft skin and the soft skin can resonate. Or, or a piano, we have the frame and the strings suspended within the frame. Or if you look at a guitar or a cello, we have the side walls of the, of the cello or the guitar and, and the front and the back in the other side. So the sides of those instruments act as the frame. So so this frame and resonator that's common for every instrument that uh, makes lower frequencies so basically when you okay so that's it i don't want to just add any additional things to that but this is i think uh, that's the key for success for any kind of uh, loudspeaker design use a, a light material for the resonator surface and use a hard frame to provide the uh, the mechanical basis so that those resonances remain controlled and uh, and and the waves the frequencies that it makes the resonances can be propagated front and back when you don't have that frame then it will warp in 3d and that creates those uh, unwanted colorations that you don't want so thank you everyone for tuning in i i just can't even uh, begin to emphasize how important this lesson is and i think if loudspeaker manufacturers would start to employ this uh, frame and skin method to make loudspeakers then we would see like truly truly vast transformation fundamental transformation in the quality of loudspeakers we are getting of course frame and skin method for making a loudspeaker makes it way more expensive to make a cabinet like that uh, terribly more expensive but if you are doing it for yourself at home uh, it's basically just uh, an added hour of work especially for an open buffer you just need to make a nice strong frame for it and you are done you are that's like an extra uh, hour looking for material and then an extra half a day you put it together and bingo that's it so thank you for tuning in please like subscribe and build your uh, piano loudspeakers bye bye